Hi, I'm Professor Kreitziger, and for this part of the Nursing 103 video series, I'm going to, do, going to be demonstrating our general survey and our HEAT or head and neck exam. So for the general survey, you won't need any equipment, just your own eyes and ears and stuff like that. Um, for our head and neck exam, there's a few things that you will need, so make sure you have those out ahead of time. So we're going to need a pen light to look at eyes and mouth. You're going to need an otoscope to look in ears. We're going to need, uh, you probably need a tongue depressor for the mouth again. Uh, otoscope covers, something close for your client to read because we're going to be looking at near vision, and an eye cover so that we can look at um, one eye at a time. We also have a Snellen chart on the wall so that we can see how our client does um, far vision. So remember for every body system we're going to look at, um, you're going to start out with two review of systems questions. So for general survey usually I like to start out with how are you? I'm good, how are you? Great, thanks. Um, and another one is, do you need anything or is there anything I can do for you? Something like that. Because the general survey really just kind of tells us kind of a quick hit whether um, our client is needing something or not. So that for your check off on this, make sure that you're verbalizing all the components. So we're looking at um, our client's uh, general, the whole general snapshot of our patient. So gender and race, you know, you're a Caucasian male. Um, I didn't ask you how old you are, but um, that would be a piece of this. Uh, height and weight, you can either get from the chart or you can ask your client, because um, it's really like general body build of a you know, slender, underweight, overweight, you know, I would say that you're average weight, uh, so general body type. Um, posture tells us something about your client. You know, it tell, you, you, wanna, um, you, you want your client to have like a generally erect posture that can tell you something about your client's mood it can tell you whether they have any skeletal abnormalities. Um, you want their body movements to be smooth and fluid and coordinated. So if you see them you know, walking, whether you're ambulating or getting up to the bathroom would be a good time to do that. Um, one thing that we look at is hygiene, dress, and body odor. So um, I would say that you're dressed appropriately for the situation because you're in lab today. So you're dressed appropriately for the temperature in the room and the situation and everything like that. So no issues with hygiene. So remember, we're using our nursing judgment. We're not being judgmental. So just to make sure that we have that distinction. Um, you know, your client's hygiene can tell you a lot about their, uh, like whether they're depressed or not, for example. Um, it can also give you a clue as to their socioeconomic status, which could be important for, say, discharge teaching. Um, general affect and mood. You know, when I said hi to my patient, and he said hi back to me, uh, we, I can see that his, um, his speech is clear. Right? You're mm -hmm. pleasant, appropriate, and that kind of stuff. So make sure that when you're doing your checkoff, you're verbalizing all this stuff. You wouldn't normally walk into a patient's room and say, hey, you have great hygiene, you know, but um, that's something that you want to verbalize for your checkoff. And um, lastly, signs of abuse or substance abuse. And, uh, you know, anything visible that you might see, injuries or um, flinching or something like that for signs of abuse or neglect, um, but substance abuse, we always want to be aware if our patients are going to be withdrawing for a substance. So sweating, tremors, agitation, things like that. If you don't see anything like that, you look great. So general survey complete. So as far as the, um, the head and neck, Again, we always start with our review of systems questions. So for my client here, I might ask, you know, have you had any colds or flu recently? Uh, no. Okay, great. Any changes in your vision? No. Great, so those are two good ways to start. Um, so remember for our ad pie, uh, we always, this is the assessment, but um, we always start with inspection first. Okay, so, you know, I already got a good look at my client. So for this, um, I didn't do two identifiers, but I know your first name and you probably don't want to say that on the video, so that's fine. Okay, but I would, before I do any kind of assessment, obviously do my um, hand hygiene and two patient identifiers. So first I'm going to look at your skull, okay, kind of get a general idea of the shape of your skull. I'm going to palpate a little bit, you know, feel for any kind of lumps or bumps or anything any soft spots, anything like that, okay? So that looks good. And I also wanna do um, some palpation on your TMJ. So do you have any clicking, any tooth grinding? Um, yeah, I 
I do. I show it. Okay, usually I do this from the front. Okay, so is it going to hurt when I touch on your? It should be fine. Okay, so right just on the jaw. Can you open and close? Okay, any clicks? I do feel a kind of a pop there. Okay, but you already know that. Yeah. Okay, so that's nothing new. All right, so I'm going to do visual acuity, and um, for purposes of this, I'm going to say you're about 20 feet from that Snell and eye chart. Okay, do you wear any contacts or anything? Nope. Okay, so I'm going to have you cover one eye there. So cover your right eye. So we're looking at your left eye. So what is the lowest uh, line there that you can read? Uh, my 10 F D E L T C R O. Okay, and how about with the other eye? And do you see two lines on there, like two colored lines? Yes, uh, green and red. Okay, so we want also want to look at color vision, so the, the green and red lines. We'll tell you if you have red and color blindness. Okay, well your distance vision is fantastic. Um, and I'm also going to have you, um, I just brought a menu here, so can you, can you read a couple lines off of there for me? Yes, appetizers, mozzarella marinara, cheese balls, jalapeno poppers, Perfect. broccoli and cheese bites. Okay, thanks. Um, so with the, with the near vision, make sure you're not um, actually testing your client's reading, we're just testing vision. So when I brought something, I, I wanted to bring something that also has some pictures on it. So, you know, you could see that there's a burger That's there. burger. Yeah, because I don't care whether you can read for this, I just care whether you can see. Um, I hope that makes sense. Yep. Uh, okay, so for um, something called extraocular movements, I am going to um, have you look at me, okay? So I want to make sure that your eyeballs are going to be able to move in um, all the directions that they need to and without any kind of like wiggling, okay? So I'm, follow my finger with your eyes, keep your head steady, okay? And I'm just going to kind of move my finger in kind of a, like an H so I can see like all the different directions that your eyes can move, which they do nice and smoothly, okay? No wiggling or anything like that. Okay, your eyes are, you know, they're both looking straight ahead, so that's good. Uh, the next one is visual fields. So that is uh, whether you can really see in all the different directions. So if you think your client might have glaucoma, for example, or have like a missing spot of their vision, this is a good one to do. So I'm going to have you look, like sit straight on with me, okay, and keep your head steady again. So I'm just going to kind of wiggle my fingers and tell me when you can see and move into your field of vision. Just say yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right, so um, again, you should be able to see it at the same time as your client, and this is just a gross screening. So for example, if your client is missing like a field over here, I might want to do a couple of extra, can you see over here, and um, you know, if they're missing any visual fields, we'd have them go see an ophthalmologist or not, yeah, the ophthalmologist for that. And everything checks out just fine so far, because remember with our AIDIT, we're always explaining what we're doing with our client, and we're also telling them right away what we found. Okay, that's really important because you don't want to worry your client. Um, so I need gloves again for this. This is the um, palpation and looking at eye structures. So we're looking at symmetry of all the eye pieces, like is everything, so again, look at me. Um, so we're looking at eyebrows, we're looking at eyelids, um, the conjunctiva, that's the white part of the eye, uh, what color the eye is. Sorry, I'm on here, okay. I'm going to feel for the lacrimal apparatus, which is kind of in the upper corner here, so there shouldn't be any tenderness, okay? If you feel like a swelling there, that's an issue. And I'm just going to kind of pull your, the front part of your eye down a little bit and just make sure that's a nice, juicy pink there. There's no um, pus or anything like that. There's no, like, tearing. Um, so those are the things that we want to look at there. Um, no clouding of the lenses. And remember, you have that... Um, that sheet of stuff that's uh, expected changes in the elderly, so you might see a little gray ring around the eye. That would be um, one of those sort of normal things in our elderly clients. So we're also going to look at PERLA, okay? And that stands for pupils are equal, round, reactive to light, and accommodation. And for your clients with darker eyes, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult, but you got your pen light. So we're just going to kind of swing it in from the side 
and watch the pupil constrict, okay, which they do. And you'll also see if you bring the pen light to one eye that the other pupil should constrict to kind of match. They should have a matching effect. And the other thing, uh, there's a couple of different ways to do this part, but we want to make sure the accommodation in Perla is working right. So um, sometimes we'll have the client look at, so look at my finger, okay, and then look at the far wall over there. Okay, and the, the pupils should um, it widen as they look far away. That's accommodation, like how quickly um, the pupils adapt to near and far vision. So again, that's a little slower in our elderly clients. Um, again, for ears, uh, you know, make sure that they're about, um, you know, set about midway on the head, that they're kind of even, you know, nothing looks weird on the outside. Okay, so that's kind of a basic one. Uh, we're gonna do a hearing acuity. So I'm gonna be a couple of couple of feet away where the client can't see my lips, and I'm just gonna say three words. Or some battery staple. Yes. Okay. And I would do that on the other side. So it's just kind of again a gross hearing test. It's not any kind of fancy hearing screening, uh, but we do want to also look inside the ear to um, see if there's anything, um, any kind of earwax in there, any kind of. Um, like bulging or redness of the, um, the tympanic membrane. So I've got my, my uh, otoscope. I'm gonna turn that on, okay. All right, so we're gonna take, this is called the pina here, this back part for our adult clients. We're gonna pull it kind of up and back and then just take a look in there and let me know if this hurts at all. Everything looks clean. Oh, beautiful. Tympanic membrane is a nice pearly gray, as it should be. I see a cone of light. You'll see kind of a, um, like a triangular bit of light reflect. And again, Pina up and back. Thank you for letting me do this. No problem. Um, okay, everything looks great. So the, the cone of light should be at about a seven o'clock position on the left. And, um, a five o'clock position on the right. So that shows you that the, um, the tympanic membrane is healthy, it's not bulging, um, nothing abnormal about that. If you saw a lot of earwax in there, you'd um, want to give your client instructions how to clean that out. Um, nose and sinuses. And again, um, you know, unless you've looked in a lot of ears and looked in a lot of noses, it's kind of tricky, but um, you want to be able to at least practice doing this. So one, you can use either a pen light or you can use the, um, the otoscope again. But kind of, uh, we want to make sure that there's no like sinus tenderness. Can you, any tenderness on the sinuses? Okay, nose looks nice and straight. Doesn't look like you have a deviated septum, but I'm gonna have you kind of tip back. And I'm just gonna get a good look up there and um, nothing looks inflamed or swollen. You know, the inside of your nose looks like a nice medium pink. Um, if somebody had really swollen turbinates or nasal polyps, you might see that you can't see up in there and all you see is just like big, almost like grapes kind of looking in there. So we don't see that and that's great. Um, I guess I'm going to look at my oh, I'm going through a lot of gloves here. Not the best planning, but hopefully when you, as the student, do this check off. You'll plan better for minimizing how many gloves you use. Um, but I'm putting gloves on because I'm going to take a quick look inside your mouth. Lips first, you know, lips look good, not too chapped or anything like that. But I'm just going to take my pen light again. Yeah, open up. Okay, I don't see any obvious signs of decay. Your teeth are beautiful. Wow. Okay, can you lift your tongue? Yeah, we're just kind of looking. You know, I don't see any, thanks. Uh, don't see any weird uh, lesions or anything like that. Uh, so I'm gonna have you stick your tongue out. Okay, just kind of, let me say, ah. Uh, uh, oh, this is hard to see in there. Oh, uh, uh, okay, so nothing looks too inflamed. Again, your tonsils look good. Okay, we're gonna kind of grade our tonsils on like a one to, one to four scale, depending on how big they are. So general neck, I think we're done with gloves. General neck muscle tone, can you kind of, like that. Can you swallow for me? Uh, it's real important that we know that the trachea is midline. I don't see any kind of um, swollen um, 
thyroid or anything like that. Okay, can you run you, I'm gonna run you through some range of motion of your neck. So chin down, okay, and then touch one ear to your shoulder, other ear. Okay, can you lean back? Okay, it looks like it, anything hurt or anything like that? No. Okay, great. All right, um, and lastly, lymph nodes. We're gonna palpate again, and I won't put gloves on for this, but um, it, it's good to have an order that you go in every single time, and I like to go in this order. So occipital is the ones back here, okay? Preauricular in front of the ear, I don't feel anything there. Postauricular, okay, uh, tonsillar, okay, just feel under here, don't feel anything. Submental, okay, um, anterior, cervical, posterior, don't feel anything there. And don't forget the supraclavicular. Because and lymph nodes drain infection and cancer cells and stuff like that. So if you find a swollen lymph node that's new, that would be of concern. Sometimes people have a lymph node that's just been there forever with no changes, but I don't feel anything. So um, that concludes our exam today. Everything checks out great. Yeah, thank you for um, being my patient. I really appreciate it. Thanks for checking so, me out. Yeah, great. <laughs> and then I'll clean up everything. Awesome. Thanks.